So, hopefully my Bluetooth is going to cancel out the sound of the rain. I have a metal roof, so the rain actually may not be as bad as it sounds, but it's definitely loud. So, hopefully my Bluetooth is canceling that out. Um, I wanted to talk about the uh, preparation for a snowstorm. For people that aren't used to either managing their own horses, like they're, it's their first time managing their own horses for a snowstorm, um, or first time even being in an area that has snow, like somebody that moved from the south to the north, or, or in our case, the south that's going to get a snowstorm they're not used to, um, how to prepare for that. First, of, first for me is I always make sure that I have waterproof blankets. Um, blankets that, you know, aren't 500 years old and you just drag them out of the attic and they're not waterproof because if you're going to put them out in the weather, a uh, water, a non-waterproof blanket will get soaked, then soak through, then your horse will get wet and you'll take away their ability to manage that with the elevations of their hair. Their, their fur can actually elevate, I believe, 17 different heights um, to protect them from the elements. I mean, that's, they're naturally capable of protecting themselves from the elements. If we put a blanket on top of their fur, we're preventing them from being able to do what their body would do naturally. So now we have to make sure that when we do do that, we don't put them at a disadvantage by flattening their hair, taking that, advent taking that capability away from them, and then saturating them. So waterproof blankets is like priority. So if you know a snow snowstorm is coming and you're going to want to blanket your horses and your blankets are, you know, 15 years old and you have enough time to do your own uh, like scotch guarding and, you know, airing them out so that they're not poisonous. Uh, I'm not sure which one people use. I just buy new blankets. I never, I've never done weatherproofing on my blankets, so I don't know what people use. So I'm not recommending anything specific because I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I'm a bit of a blanketaholic, so I just buy new blankets. Uh, gives me an excuse. Um, waterproof blank, because if your horse gets wet and now has a wet blanket on, then their body's wet and the temperatures drop, which they generally do in a snowstorm, you are going to make your horse sick. Almost guaranteed. To me, I would find that to be an almost guarantee. Um, I don't want to be responsible for having made my horses sick, where if I had left the blankets off, their bodies could have done what it needed to do to prevent their skin from getting wet. If you allow them to get saturated, then their, their fur gets saturated, their fur gets saturated, then their skin gets wet. And now they're cold because that wet blanket's going to be cold from the temperature and then their underside will be cold because they're wet. I mean, I'm, I know I'm explaining like being Captain Obvious here, but um, just trying to express the importance of a waterproof blanket. Pay attention to it being waterproof, not water resistant. Some blankets claim that they're water resistant, but they're not going to go as far as saying that they're waterproof. So when you're buying a blanket, make sure that it's a waterproof blanket. And if you want a, a little more advice, get the at least a 1200 denier. If you get something like a 600 denier or a 420, you run the risk of um, it being able to be ripped really easily. Like I have horses that will reach down and even tug on their own shoulder gussets, and a lesser denier would definitely result in a ripped blanket. So just spend your money wisely in that case. The other thing that I make sure of is every single water bucket I own is full of water. If you're expecting a big storm, especially if you have overhead electric lines, but even if you don't have overhead electric lines, something can happen to your transformer, something can happen to your box, something can happen down the street that's going to turn off your electric. Somebody could wreck and, you know, knock out everybody's electric because they wrecked into one of the boxes, you know. So never, ever, ever uh, assume that even if you have underground electric lines that you're going to be safe to not lose electricity. So always fill all your electric, all your water buckets and all your water tubs outside. 
Um, I always put hay outside, even if it's going to get rained on or wet, um, with the snow. Generally speaking, like right now it's raining and it's going to change to snow and my horses have already been put out. Um, so their, their hay is getting wet. If I thought, say, it, cause it was supposed to change over at four and it's already after five and it hasn't changed over. Um, and my horses go out at two 30, they're, you know, they're fed at two and they're all out by two 30. And, um, I'm not gonna make them stay in, but if you are somebody who would prefer to let your horses stay in, if I had a choice, which I do, but if I, if I had a choice, I would go out there and put the hay on top of snow instead of in the mud, you know, or on a saturated ground. That's my preference. And, or if you're, you know, if you have one of those elevated feeders, make sure they got plenty of hay during a snowstorm because hay, eating hay, even sifting through it and all that will keep them warm. The other thing too is in a snowstorm, I don't worry about it as much because generally speaking, the temperatures do drop, but be very, very careful that you chose the right weight blanket. Uh, I did another video recently about the weighted blanket choosing. If you have a choice between, I think my horse will overheat slightly with this weight. Say you're doing a 200 fill, um, or a hundred fill or, a, you know, a zero fill, which is just a sheet making the decision on which blanket to choose would be based on if he'd be too warm, any chance he'd be too warm in the 200 gram. I would not put that one on. I would put the hundred gram on, or I'd put just a sheet on your horse can better regulate their own temperature by shivering and keeping warm that way, but they can't regulate the overheated temperature. A overheated horse becomes wet from the skin out. So therefore they're cold. They catch a chill. Now it's kind of your fault that your horse got sick. That's kind of how I always, I make sure that I always know that I didn't cause something or I at least try really hard to be aware of what I might cause. And if you overheat your horse, you can cause your horse to get sick. Um, Oh, trying to like cover things. I'm like, okay, that's kind of it. Your fencing, obviously you would have wanted to check all your fencing before the storm. Um, and then if you have electric tape, I always make sure that it's taut. I don't do a full cranking down on it. Um, you know, before a storm for two reasons, cause the wind could cause it to now any weaknesses that were there could cause it to now snap for sure. Um, also, once it starts getting weighted down by the snow, if it wasn't used to being that tight, could also cause it to snap. But I make sure it's taut and not totally floppy if you haven't been keeping up with it and it's loose. Like I go by some of these farms and you see that it looks like, you know, decorations like garland, you know, like I don't even know how those horses don't, how they respect it. Uh, then what I do is... I take like a, like a set of like kitchen tongs, like say now the storm's over or you're mid storm, but you notice your, your, it's a heavy snow and you're noticing that your electric lines are starting to get weighted down. Take uh, a pair of kitchen tongs and, or even grill tongs, I guess I've done it with just two screwdrivers. Um, turn the electric off, <laughs> turn the electric off before you do this. Um, and then take the tongs and you, twist it just enough. So the electric is being hit on front and back and then just walk your line and it'll knock snow off. And if you, if you have um, a metal tong, it'll actually scrape and get like kind of caught up underneath ice. If you have ice and, it, and ice will come off in like chunks, like sheets. Um, definitely want to pay attention to your electric lines getting weighed down because once they touch the ground, I know another Captain Obvious thing, you ground out your electric, your horses can get out. So you want to make sure that your electric is taut but not tight. And that if you notice they start getting weighted down to go out there and, and I don't recommend, you know, plucking it. So it like a, like a guitar string, 
because again, if it wasn't used to being as tight as you just tightened it, you could be the reason it snaps suddenly. The cold, if there was already any kind of fray from it hitting, you know, being in the wind in the past, um, just all those things, you know, you really want to be mindful of. That's pretty much it. I mean, shelter, you know, luckily for my guys, I just opened up a new space for my big guys. And it turns out that because all these shelters on this farm were for standard breads, which were much shorter than a Clydesdale. So my Clydesdale and my Clydesdale cross didn't have a shed. Uh, we were making, you know, plans to maybe raise some sheds for them. And then I just opened up a new space and, and to my delight, the horses that had been here in the past either dug a lot, you know, pawed a lot, or just from use um, actually created almost a lower ground underneath. So the horses, my horses can actually get in those shelters. Not that you need to know that part, but um, providing shelter. Now we've all gone by farms and seen horses standing out in the snow without a care in the world, standing out in the rain without a care in the world. But Providing shelters is important for wind because your horse will try to get out of the wind. And if you have an open field and you don't even have like a grouping of trees that they can kind of get by, your horses will prefer to be uh, able to get out of the wind. The wind is actually the big deal. Other than that, I don't know that I have any... You know, if, if you didn't get, if you have shoes on your horses and you didn't get snow pads yet, yikes, you know, it'll be fine. But just make sure that if you see your horses kind of walking like they're on, on rollers, you might want to uh, go out there and pick their feet to make sure that they get the snowballs out of their shoes because it's going to be very strenuous on their tendons and their muscles and their joints um, because they're not, their legs aren't they're going to have big snowballs under. So here's, here's the flatness of their hoof. They're going to have a snowball sticking out. Even with snow pads, you can get snowballs, um, but uh, their snow pads are designed to allow them to kind of pop off more easily, but certainly on icier conditions, snow, snow pads um, even create snowballs. I don't leave halters on ever anyway, but I wouldn't leave halters on in a snowstorm um, because of the, the metal being cold and, you know, collecting, you know, kind of like your electric lines, we collect stuff. So it's just, wow, it's really coming now. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's really coming now. Okay. Uh, I wish this would hurry up and change. It's supposed to be like 25 mile an hour winds. I'm, I'm hoping it changes over to snow soon because I don't really like getting this much rain anymore. This is like the fourth day of solid rain. My property, luckily for me, we saw it in the worst rain season they've ever had. And we know what the property will do with the water. So we're pretty pleased with how this water drains off this property, but we've had enough rain now. I'm ready for it to not uh, add to the water we've already had. That's it. Really good. hay, lots of hay. Lots of hay. Let them stay busy. And if you have low men on the totem pole, um, then make sure that you have more spaces for the hay. Like if you have horses that just don't get access to the hay until the other horses have had enough, that's not going to happen in a snowstorm. So provide that horse. You know, I often, well, my horses get hay out on the ground. So I put a flake here, walk 10 feet, a flake here, walk 10 feet, a flake here, walk 10 feet. So I, I never just pile my hay in one spot. So all my horses, whether they're high man, low man, whatever, they get plenty of choices. And if they get run off, there's another flake that they get run off to. So there's my story about what to do if you're expecting a snowstorm and you're not really that familiar with managing horses in a snowstorm. Um, prepare. That's all I can say. Prepare. Waterproof. Make sure you have water. Make sure you have hay. Um, and shelter. And then you should be okay.